Oh, uh, we're going to be tying grasshoppers. So, what you want to do first is get yourself a turkey feather. I've tied lots of these legs previously. However, um, it's good to be industrial about this. Like, if you're going to tie some hoppers, tie a whole bunch and make this whole feather into legs first. So, I have about four, maybe five of those fibers from the, the turkey feather. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to twist them. So I have a loop and pinch it with one hand. Uh, so it's sort of like a curly cue at this moment. Now I will grab them all with a tweezer. And attempt to put them inside of the loop. I failed there. But with a little bit of practice, it can get pretty easy. I mean, it's not maybe the prettiest leg I've ever done. But you get the point on how you can tie a knot to make a knuckle. And it doesn't really matter if they all want to splay apart. You can always come back with a resin or a super glue and fix it later. The main thing is that you got that knuckle. Now, the hook. I'm just going to use a number four hook. Uh, this is an Aberdeen style hook but if you must know all the specifics it is a Mustad R 73-9671 we're just going to place it right side up in the hook get it down tight so you can hear it sing for thread I'm just matching um, my base color, which is going to be this green here, with my thread. So I have a chartreuse uni thread that's in a 220 denier. Just going to cinch it up in my fingers so I don't cut as much excess away. The hard part is try not to let it slip out of your fingers. Anyway, got a, enough wraps there to make some security. So I'm going to cut away my excess, continue my thread wraps, down to the base of the hook. Now, I have some strips of foam. I cut them out previously. I've got this one. I've got some yellow foam. So now I will take my scissors and cut a taper into my foam. May not be the best taper, but uh, it'll work. It doesn't need to be super pretty, although I like to have smooth edges rather than rough, choppy stuff.
All right. Just go down to where the hook starts to bend, and then we'll come back up. Take our yellow strip of foam. I did cut a longer piece. I didn't know if that other piece from that other hopper would work out. Just trying to cinch this foam down. as much as possible. Don't want to build up a huge body. I like to keep it tight when possible. All right, so now we got the super glue. Make sure our thread is back up to the halfway point. It's just some Gorilla Glue. I like it because there's both the, the brush applicator and then the bottleneck if you want to. Um, I don't know. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just sort of like their product. So. I'm going to take our yellow piece and be wrapping it around. Now that we have this all up and secure, we are going to wrap it tight, make sure it's not going anywhere. Apply a little super glue to the upper part of the abdomen and pull this forward. We're going to apply just a little pressure. Keep this tight. Keep it sort of tapered and, and rounded because it, it is being pulled over. You know, it was a square stock piece, but if you can make it tight, pull your thread tight, it can be nice and smooth. Or maybe not the opposite side. It looked really good from my angle. Anyway. Uh, it's better, but it's still not great. Anyway. Cut this away. You don't need it. Take a little bit of uh, super fine dry fly dubbing, any color you really like, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick a cream, and this hand has glue on it, so it wants to stay there on it, but uh, we need it for our thread. So we're going to just spin it on. I always take one, one set of... Uh, fingers and pinch it and the other the other set of fingers is sort of dreadlocking it onto the thread it's a it's a twisting process where you're having all the fibers weave into one another it takes a little time but it's well worth the effort to make it look good And every time you 
you make a securing wrap, you can always give it another twist if you want it tighter. You need a little bit more, so maybe I had it right the first time, but uh, you can add it in stages, it doesn't. Alright, we just want to have a nice little base that's sort of like Velcro. That dubbing is soft and light and it's wispy mm -hmm. and now when we go to lock this, these legs in, there's something there to grab and grip mm -hmm. all of my fibers. And this one looks like it got twisted, which is okay. We'll just spin our fibers around. Try wrapping this in from a different angle. This is really why I like tying these knuckles, these legs of the hoppers, with at least three strands, if not more like four or five or six, depending on the size of the hopper you're trying to create. Pardon my dog, she's just a puppy. She seems to have an itchy nose, I don't know if she has allergies or... Now that we have them locked in, we're just going to trim away the excess there. Take a little bit more dubbing. All right. So just some packaging dunnage. They uh, wrap breakable items in it as they send them through the mail. If you've ever ordered any auto parts in the mail, I'm pretty sure you've had some of this come in your box. I hold on to it. I think it makes excellent wings that just require a little bit of trimming with the scissors. Now we're going to take the foam we had previously trimmed away. We're just going to taper.
so it's got a nice seating area. Makes a nice little wing case there. Just gonna make a few more tighter wraps, cinching this all just down. And come in front of our foam and get back down to the hook shank. Now, we have some chartreuse hackle feather used from a previous hopper, so the tip is gone, but it's still a front tip, I guess. It's not as long of a tip, but you get it. We tie that in, wrap it back up under the foam as much as you can before coming back forward again. What this does is allows these legs to start all the way back next to your other legs. Through all the front sort of arms and helps to pinch the fibers back with each turn forward so that they're all sort of facing one direction or you don't wrap the feather over itself and lock up your fibers so they don't splay all over the place. All right, take your thread, lock off that hackle feather, trim the excess away. Now do sort of a final sweep. Take your thread and, and make a little head. You wanna work it back maybe over the, the feather fiber so they're most of them are pointing backwards. It's okay if they're kind of all over the place. They will do that. If you can pull them out before pulling this foam down, you're going to be in a little bit better shape. I know, I just said push them back and wrap the the thread back but what you're gonna do now is fold this foam over and uh, capture that and it's gonna make a nice abdomen bump this is why you had to go back at least a quarter of an inch because you need to make another tie in here for the head At this point, um, I'm going to take a, a pheasant tail feather, and I want uh, two fibers, that's it, only two, I'm going to trim them away. Clean them up and splay them out. Do one wrap. Pull them where I want them. And 
then continue making a few wraps, pulling them more so where I want them, doing a wrap in front, then doing another wrap behind, and uh, they should be pretty secure. So now any fibers that are up by this hook eye, I'm going to like just pull back as much as possible. Pinch this foam forward one more time. And I capture some foam, but I'm making sure that I'm hooking up with my hook eye before coming over for another pass. I'm going to go back behind the antenna. Sometimes I think I find uh, I put too much over the hook eye and I don't like tying in right there. I just trimmed away the excess on the back of the antenna. I'm also going to trim away the front at this point. Okay, I'm going to wrap my fingers and make a, a couple of half hitches with my hand and strategically angle them around the antenna and then pull it in tight. Just going to do this about four or five times. Definitely at least three. Got a couple sharpies here. We're gonna do a little artwork. First, I always like to give some eyes to the grasshopper. some stripes or some dots. Two dots up there. Do some stripes on the abdomen. Maybe we'll do just a little bit of shading like this. Okay. Some stripes in and amongst the dots. 
But really, this is your creation. You color it how you want to. You don't have to listen to me. Especially when it comes to colors or material. It doesn't, you know, do it how you want to do it. That's that's the beauty of the, the art or the sport uh, within itself. No one's telling you how to do it. I'm just trying to guess inspire you by showing you the way that I do it. I'm just gonna clean this up. The it would be impossible to thread it right now. There's just so much foam in the way. Could have maybe done a better job trimming, but this works. Because this fits right in the hole where the fishing line goes. So, this can clear the way. Make sure you can lace it up. Alright, it sort of morphed the face, but I don't think it's that bad. With it being warm like that, it's going to Be able to bend those fibers around nicely. Alright, we, uh, I always just trim them away from the bottom, you know, pull as many legs out to the side as I can, but when this fly hits the water, you want it just to lay flat. You don't really want a ton of these hackles. Laying down. At this point, I just throw a little UV finish. This will help you straighten out those legs, antenna, give a little clear coat finish to your artwork so it doesn't just fade away. But yeah, get it everywhere. Get it on the hackles, especially if you feel like, oh, you could spread these apart some more. Yeah. Spread it out, hit it with the torch. There you have it. Go fish it.